What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Crawl TV. Today we're going to be talking about common U-joint failures. Now let's start with the basics. What is a U-joint? It's this. It's not in the shape of a U. <laughs> it is in the shape of a lowercase t. This is a Tom Woods 1350 U-joint and this came off of a brand new rear drive shaft that I got from them. And I wanted to go over what the basics of this are first before we get into discussing why they fail so that you guys can follow along with what I'm saying because I will be using some terminology relating to this U-joint here. So this is the U-joint itself and in the center you've got four points. These machined little shafts are called trunnions and this is what the U-joint caps mount on. Inside of the U-joint caps you've got needle bearings all the way around the edge and these needle bearings are greased so when these two parts go together, the caps can rotate on the trunnions. That gives you an X and Y axis to rotate on so that you can get this kind of movement. Following? Okay, now, when a U-joint goes bad, the way you're gonna figure it out usually is by driveline vibration. If you get driveline vibration, usually it's because there has been um, some slop that has formed either in the trunnion or in the needle bearings or both, and that is causing an in balance, it's causing the drive line to be able to spin out of its um, manufactured cycle. So instead of the drive shaft, which would meet perpendicular to this, spinning straight through this, it's allowing this to move side by side and up and down, and that's going to cause your drive shaft to bounce around, and it could potentially cause damage to your yokes and your transmission and everything else. So, what causes a U joint shaft, or <laughs> just a U joint, to fail? We're going to get into that right now. Let's get started. All right guys, so we've covered the basic anatomy of what a U-joint is. Yes, there are more pieces to this little puzzle, but what we really need to understand are the fundamentals, that it's got caps, needle bearings, and grease, and it rotates on an X and Y axis to transmit power from your engine to other driveline components, and it provides that movement that you need for your suspension cycling so that you don't just have a straight, rigid driveline. But this has a very important purpose, which is to keep everything balanced as well, as it's rotating, so it has no slop available in it. Like I said, these are very precise parts. So when you put this in, there shouldn't be any wiggle room whatsoever as you're installing everything. Now, there are obvious things that you can look for when these go bad, such as stretched U-joint cap straps, or stretched U-bolt straps, or loose U-bolt straps, um, or maybe this was a trail repair and this was dirty when you put it into that yoke and that's causing some kind of abnormal wear or misalignment. Those are easy things to spot with the naked eye, but there are other things that you need to look for as well. So here's a hypothetical for you. You're driving down the road and you feel that vibration. So you pull over, you wiggle some parts around and you find that you've got a bad U-joint. So do you just replace the U-joint? Of course you do. And then two to 3,000 miles later, that same pesky U-joint's going bad on you again. And you're like, what the heck? I just replaced that thing. It must be a bad part. Well, it could be. And there are ways to see if it actually is a bad U-joint or a U-joint that hasn't been serviced properly or if you've got other problems surrounding your U-joint. And we're just going to slide those U-joint cap straps and U-bolt straps off the table for now because there are other things that you need to look at. So let's take a look at one part that most people overlook when their U-joints go bad. The yoke. I have a yoke. <laughs> So this is a 1350 yoke that fits my 1350 U-joint, like a glove. They're actually so precise that it holds it in place and there is absolutely no wiggle room here on this yoke. The yoke itself has bores or saddles that the U-joint has to sit in and these have to be perfectly mated to the outside of these caps and then they've got little tabs on the ends of them that hold the caps in place. So once this falls into place, there should be absolutely zero movement here. And what happens is, say you're wheeling and you blow your U-joint out, you put a new U-joint in and you carry on your merry way. Well, what could have happened is as that thing came apart, it could have damaged your yoke or maybe you just have an older drive line. And as the years go by, there's rust forming, there's corrosion, it gets pitted, things like that. If that yoke goes bad, it can cause your U-joint to go bad. Now, if your U-joint goes bad and it's bad on all four corners, 
that means that either it's just a cheap U-joint and you just wore all those metal components that are supposed to be movable inside of it down, or it wasn't serviced properly. So if it's got a Zerk fitting provision there, then you need to pump grease into these things and keep them mobile. But if it's only going bad on two sides, it could be caused by a bad yoke. And a lot of people think that the yoke is just there to transfer the power, but it can cause some serious damage. So this is how it happens. If your yoke is bad, it's gonna allow your U-joint caps to slide slightly off of the trunnion, right? So it'll be about just that much off. That allows just enough wiggle room for your U-joint cap to get cocked inside of that yoke. And this trunnion here will actually wear the edge of that trunnion down and it'll wear it into those needle bearings. And then, so what's gonna happen is it's gonna shave the trunnion on the driveline side of it, right? The one that you're applying the torque to and it's gonna wear those needle bearings out so bad that they're just gonna turn into a crumbly mess of metal and you're gonna blow through a U-joint. Now, Sean from Tom Woods Drive Shafts actually sent me out a YJ drive shaft that had this exact problem so I can share it with you guys here. And it's a pretty good learning tool to just show you what can happen here. So let's call this the Y-axis of this U-joint. Or sorry, we'll call this the X-axis of this U-joint. That makes more sense. And we'll call this one the Y-axis, right? So you can see the driveline side of this U-joint. So here and here are completely rounded out on this trunnion. It's completely toast, but the X-axis is still perfectly fine. So what we can determine happened is that U-joint cap got cocked sideways like this and like this, and it allowed that to just apply enough thrust to the inside of those needle bearings to wear through the needle bearings and wear down the side of the trunnion. Now, if we look at the yoke, there's actually even more evidence of this happening. So we can see here on this yoke, one side still has the strap on it because the U-joint exited the vehicle without having to take this strap with it. But on this side, the U-joint cap is, for all intents and purposes, welded to the yoke. And that's pretty impressive. But what we can see with this example is that the trunnion was pushing so hard laterally on one side of this U-joint cap that it actually wore all the way through it through the yoke and then poof, gone. This guy lost rear wheel drive just like that. And this YJ owner could have avoided this whole situation if when he replaced this U-joint, he also replaced this yoke. I'll give you guys some up close views of this yoke so that you can see all the damage to it. But one key thing to note is that inside of the yoke on the side that still has the strap, there's actually a pretty good wear mark on the strap and in the yoke. And that wear is what causes this to be able to move around and that movement, like I said, it will find a way. So that is a very important thing to look out for. If you blow through a U-joint, find out why. And if you blow through two sides of the four sides of a U-joint, this is gonna be the next thing that you have to look for. So in this video, we've covered the basics of U-joints failing. So you've got straps, U-bolts, loose U-bolts, dirt and grime, and then of course, you gotta check out your yokes. And that's it for this tech tip, so I appreciate all of you watching. Please check out my YouTube channel, Crawl TV, and subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you very much. Please leave a comment down below and tell me what, you, what else you think can cause a U-joint to fail. And uh, check out my other social media channels, such as Facebook and Instagram, and my website, www.crawltv.com. And that's it, I appreciate you guys watching, and I will see you on the next episode where I share another tech tip with you, right here on Crawl TV. Bye.